another successful landing. Metaphysical and scientific abstractions. If human beings were that intellectually involved, we would have a much simpler language for defining natura naturans, or specifically what we call Mother Nature. I'm going to talk about the basis, and science today is used like a, a religious word of dogma. Science, you got to listen to the science. Well, when people use those words in such emphatic terms, what they're talking about is their own beliefs and convictions. They're not actually talking about empirical facts, logic, or wisdom. But that's a matter for another discussion. Specifically, the uh, vernacular or the nomenclature in talking about cosmic mechanics, because fundamentally, if a human being understands cosmic mechanics, then they also, too, understand attachments. They understand the root of uh, suffering. They understand the big picture, if you will being able to see the forest for the trees, because most people cannot see the forest for the trees. And the vernacular and the nomenclature are words that none of these people absolutely understand. And I mean this seriously. I, I don't mean this as some sort of abstraction. What I'm about to tell you is that you could take any of the famous best scientists on Earth. I have a PhD in theoretical physics. I work for Caltech. Wonderful. Written a lot of papers. This is my doctoral a thesis, it's uh, 600 pages long. Wonderful. Head full of empirical facts, but completely empty of wisdom. All the things that actually define, even by their own admission, they cannot, for you, define what these things are. Things like waves, fields, energy, lines, force. These are conceptual abstractions. They can't tell you what they are. Ask any scientist uh, what a field is. Excuse me, sir. Just ask it like a child. Because the easiest way to stump these people is to talk like a child would ask a really simple question that completely confounds the, uh, the uh, academic uh, illuminated. And they're not illuminated at all. Their head is full of empirical facts and data and pomp and circumstance. So what is a field? And they won't be able to tell you. Well, it's lines of force. Well, force is an abstraction. Force is done by something upon something else with a given result. So we can't say that. And lines, a field is not a line, and a line is not a field. A field is also too purely conceptual. It's like, what do you mean lines of force? Well, these are lines of force. You know, like when you sprinkle iron filings above a magnet, you know, you'll see lines of force. And if someone were to understand Mother Nature in true, they would say, no, what those actually are, those lines, the exact same thing you see in the double slit experiment. They are constructive and destructive interference between the conjugate geometry of the entire universe, which is the magnetodielectric. These are the two field modalities, fundamental field modalities, of Mother Nature. Gravity doesn't exist. The phenomenon of gravity does exist. I love it when people leave comments. Gravity does. I laugh so much. Every time I see it, I, I always get a chuckle. People say, gravity doesn't exist. And they'll say, well, you said it in a video. It's like, that's not what I said. I said, gravity is an autonomous field modality. It's not something different or unique at all. Obviously, this phenomenon exists. But when they say gravity doesn't exist, I love to laugh and chuckle because it's completely absurd. The phenomena, of course, is non-point source mutual mass acceleration. The same thing we call magnetic attraction. And magnetism is the opposite of attraction. And it's not attraction at all. It's acceleration. It's pressure mediation, because that's all Mother Nature does, is pressure mediation. Because Mother Nature doesn't have a PhD, and she hasn't written a doctoral thesis. Mother, Mother Nature is a hairy armpit chick with muddy feet and a grass skirt and uh, partial dreadlocks. Let's paint a pretty picture. She doesn't have a calculator in her pocket or her hemp skirt. That's all she understands is pressure mediation. Pressure mediation, excuse me. Force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Centrifugal divergence, centripetal convergence. These stooges of academia that love to write books, and I've written nine books and many articles myself, and I speak and translate many ancient languages. They're really tough stuff. So, even though I'm fat, bald, and tattooed, and I might look like... Uh, some guy that hangs out in a tattoo parlor or something. I spent a lot of time with my head in the clouds thinking about the profound subjects that nobody else cares about and that doesn't make anybody any money, nor makes you famous or anything else like that. It doesn't get you paid and it doesn't get you that L word which rhymes with paid. It doesn't make you fa no, None of that stuff is important. You know, the big questions 
What is it Nietzsche said, and I can't stand Nietzsche, but even a broken clock is right twice a day. I think he said, no, it was Hegel. Wasn't it Hegel that said that? He said, the unexamined life is not worth living. Was it Hegel? It could have been Proclus that said that originally. Anyway, there have been many people that have actually said that. But these people, the common vernacular, the common verbiage to define natura naturans, cosmic mechanics, or the nature of the universe, None of these people understand what these things are. They use words like fields and waves. Their biggest, most favorite word is wave. And a wave is not a thing, and I've said that thousands of times. There's no such thing as a wave. There's, there's no such thing as lines either. And the lines that we actually see, these so-called lines of force, are not lines of force where there's actually um, a, uh, a bump in the field, then an anti-bump, and that's, of course, very crude. It's just constructive and destructive interference. Same thing you see underneath the supercell. Because a magnet doesn't have a magnetic field around it only. It has the magnetodielectric conjugate geometry of the entire universe. Because a magnet is just a point source object with incommensurability of its field, which is ab extra to the physical object itself. Because what defines a magnet is qualitative, not quantitative. Because before a magnet becomes a magnet, it is quantitatively identical. Therefore, that which defines a magnet is not quantitative, but qualitative. Well, what is that quality? Well, it's a point source object. Same distinction, not totally precise, but 99% precise, between a light bulb and a laser. Yeah, 5-watt laser is way different than a 5-watt light bulb, which is useless, nearly completely useless. But if these people that you and other people, especially those that leave comments, people that have been brainwashed by this nonsense, like, do you really believe in this uh, pseudo-quantum uh, religion of nonsense? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. It, it, uh, it is reproducible. Well, yes, it is. But descriptions are not explanations. Math never explains anything. And I'm not against math at all. I'm a Pythagorean and a Platonist, specifically a Neoplatonic Platonist, or specifically Advaita Vedanta or a Neoplatonic Monist, if you know what that is. They were into arithmetic, not so much math. But math has never explained anything. Math counts and it describes. That's all math does. And descriptions are fine when it comes to making things and producing things and reproducible results and uh, entering in trajectories of uh, interplanetary spacecraft where trajectories need to be adjusted with the uh, thrust vectors. That's exactly what math is great at and really good for. But it doesn't explain anything. We could have all the math in the world and all the science in the world that would land, say, a million people on uh, Mars in five years from now. Wonderful. Why did you go there? Did you actually explain the nature of the universe by spending trillions of dollars and hundreds of thousands of scientists to build a spacecraft to land 100 uh, brain-dead, knuckle-dragging fools on the planet of Mars, you know, and recycling their own excrement? And uh, <laughs> did, you, did, did all of that math actually contribute to understanding? And the answer is no. I forward to you as a metaphysician and a true Pythagorean scientist, that are the definition of uh, techne, uh, spoken of by Aristotle. I'm not a fan of Aristotle. It's still great to read Aristotle. Not so awesome because life is short and reading the best stuff is more important than reading good stuff. Is that science is a quest for truth. And truth is not merely empirical, it's metaphysical because physics and metaphysics are not two different things. They're one and the same thing. These people that love to use the words field and force and lines and waves, they don't know what any of these things are. They cannot tell you. If you, I kid you not, I've had people put this test, uh, put this uh, fact to the test. Because some of these people that watch some of my videos, you know, they go to college. They, excuse me, Mr. Professor, what is a field? What is energy? Well, it's too complicated for me to explain to you. It take like a book, and you should read my book and. It's hubris. And the most important thing I keep saying over and over again, and I was never taught this in high school or college, nor did I hear it from any Platonist, is that nobody goes looking for the answers to the things they think they already know the answers to. 
and you should imprint that on your brain permanently like a tattoo or a brand. These people do think they know. They have no interest in knowing that which they think they already know. I beg you, if you you want a perfect example, and I mentioned this before, go on YouTube, there's like a thousand examples of the same video. It's like six minutes long. Just type in Feynman Explains Magnetism. F-E-Y-N-M-A-N. Feynman. Feynman Explains Magnetism. This is a simple British interviewer asking Feynman, who's sitting in this tall back chair, and he wiggles and squirms like a, wiggles and squirms like a, you know, like a worm on a hot plate. Well, what, what is this thing between magnets and, you know, what, what's going, and he's not trying to put the guy on the spot, he's literally saying, well, this guy is a famous, he's the famous uh, co-founder of quantum, which he is, and I've got his, many of his books, QED, Strange Theory of Light and Matter, total garbage and rubbish. Everybody loved Feynman because he would give lectures smoking big long cigarettes and drinking whiskey, and all the college kids thought he was cool. It's like, wow, this professor's smoking and he's drinking whiskey. This man is cool. <laughs> His charisma was like, he had long hair. He looked like a beatnik. He's like, man, this guy's not only smart, but he like drinking and smoking while he's giving a lecture. <laughs> True story, by the way. There are videos proving this. So you should watch this video and tell me, you know, watch it like a child and ask yourself, did this famous, intelligent, yet unwise and a foolish person, in any way, shape, or form, explain magnetism? And the answer is no. Not only did he not explain it, he obfuscated. There's a great word everybody should learn, obfuscation. He's like, well, it's just too complicated for me to explain it in a manner which you'd understand. It's kind of like an old lady slipping on the ice, which he actually says that in this video. You see, if he were wise, which he is not wise, he's dead now, of course. If he were wise, he said, you know, this is a big question that I've spent many years thinking about, and science and academia does not know the answer as what magnetism is. Thankfully, I do. That would make him wise. Ooh. But since he, his head is swollen with BS and garbage and the fact that, uh, you know, he's famous... And he is a lot more intelligent than, you know, than your average, you know, tobacco chew and fool. I will give you that, obviously. It's undeniable. He is still, nonetheless, unintelligent, I mean, excuse me, unwise and uh, foolish. He should have said that, and that would have been impressive to somebody that had some wisdom. But no, he, he tried to, he tried to uh, throw glitter in the guy's face. And uh, it, it's foolish. I, I beg you, if you really want to understand what I'm talking about and have an insight into these academic, uh, these academic academicians, just take Just type in Feynman explains magnetism. I dare you. There's a thousand copies of that same video, about six minutes long, on YouTube. A thousand at least. And the funny thing is, when you read read the, some of the comments below the biggest views of that same video. They're like, yeah, he explained it well. He explained it well. My God, old Feynman was a smart one he was. Man, what a good explanation. He didn't explain anything. <laughs> you see, this is a belief system that uh, what he was in and what exists today, it's a belief system. It's like a religion. Well, you know, I have a PhD and uh, I'm famous. A famous... Uh, I'm a famous priest in the cult of quantum. Of course, they won't say priest in the cult of quantum, but that's exactly what they are. I forward to you logically and with wisdom that if these, uh, these academicians who are moderately intelligent yet completely unwise, if they can't tell you what a field is, what a wave really is, and what these lines are that they keep observing, and they keep reifying waves as thing. Waves! Waves of what? They love to use that word everywhere. Waves! Every book on quantum and every... It was a wave. It was a quantum wave effect. <laughs> they love using that word wave. A wave of what? You ever want to stump your scientist if you're going to college? Next time you're a scientist, you're teaching your class, you know, foolish teaching the even more foolish. A wave of what, sir? What? You keep talking about waves, sir? 
What's that, uh, what's that movie with Bill Murray where he's in the army and, uh, and he has to respond like a soldier? <laughs> he said, waves of what, sir? <laughs> This to me is laughable because these people are such megalomaniacal priests, and that's what they are. They are priests. The fundamental principles of nature, they can't tell you what they are. They don't know what a force is. They talk about waves. They talk about lines. They can't define a field. They've never defined the term energy. They are both atomists and mathematicians. That's all they are. And that's not the basis for the original word science or techne. That's, that's not what science is, not in its original, not the Pythagorean, Aristotelian, or Platonic sense. That's not science at all. It's a belief system. It's a dogma. And they are priests. Yeah, I'm a priest. I've got a PhD hanging on the wall. My doctoral thesis on uh, quantum wave phenomena was a big hit at Harvard and MIT. <laughs> That's not how nature works. Not at all. It can't work that way. It fundamentally breaks the back of uh, quantum's razor. It breaks the back of many things attributional to nature. These people would actually be wise and admirable if they said, well, I, we don't know. We really want to know. As a lover and seeker of truth, I really, really, with a burning... Uh, desire in my heart want to know the big answers to these questions, but I don't know. But they don't do that at all. They do not. They tell everybody they know, they delude themselves that they know, and they don't know a damn thing.